Okay guys, welcome to Engineers Academy. Do subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet. Now we are going to solve this uh, 46 problem from chapter 3, Hibbler statics. And the problem say, says that determine the stretch in each of the two springs required to hold the 20 kg crate in the equilibrium position shown. Each spring has an unstretched length of 2 meter and a stiffness of 300 Newton per meter. So now uh, this weight is in equilibrium and the weight is 20 kg and that weight is acting vertically downward that is in the negative z direction. So this is 20 kg weight. So to find the stretch in both of these springs we have to find the forces in both of these springs right. So let's say that the force in this OA spring is represented by FA or we can say that the magnitude of the force developed in this spring is FA and that will be acting in this direction and let's say that the force developed in this OB spring is FB and let's say that here we have the cable so let's say that we have the tension in this cable let's say that is T. So we have to represent these three forces as a Cartesian vector and this weight is a Cartesian vector. So first of all if I write that T as a Cartesian vector the tension in this OC cable so the Cartesian vector representation of that tension T will be T its magnitude times the unit vector from O to C or we can say that T magnitude and the unit vector from O to C is the position vector from O to C divided by its magnitude. So this is T and the position vector from O to C we can write the position vector from O to C if we travel along x, y and z axis from O to reach that point C. So to reach that point C from O we need to travel uh, 6 meters distance in the positive x. So I will write plus 6i in the positive x that is in the positive i direction. So we will reach here then we need to travel this much distance in the positive y. So this is 4 meters. So I will write plus 4 j and then I need to travel 12 meter distance in the positive z direction or in the positive k direction. So I will write plus 12k and its magnitude will be 6 square plus 4 square plus 12 square under the square root. So let me find that magnitude 6 square, 6 square plus 4 square plus 12 square. This gives us magnitude equals to 14. So this is 14 or I can write this as t divided by 14 into that position vector from O to C. So this is the Cartesian vector representation of that tension t in this OC cable. Similarly FA we can write we can represent that FA is a Cartesian vector so as we can see that the force in this uh, OA spring is acting in the negative y direction so we can write it directly that, that it is magnitude times the j uh, unit vector since the unit vector of this fa is acting in the negative j direction if i write that the cartesian vector representation of this force f is fa times the unit vector from o to a so the unit vector from o to a is the negative j so we can write that this is fa times negative j or we can write that minus fa j Similarly, FB. So FB is acting in the negative i direction. So we can write it directly as FB times the unit vector in the negative i direction. So that is minus i. Now we can write that weight as a Cartesian vector. So the weight as a Cartesian vector will be equal to 20 times 9.81. Uh, this is the weight, uh, this is the mass, right? So we have to multiply it with 9.81. So this is 20 into 9.81. So 20 into 9.81 is 196.2. So this is 196.2. And this is acting in the negative z direction, that is in the negative k. So I will write it my, with it minus k. So now since the system is in equilibrium, so we have to add up. Uh, all the components and the summation of forces along or we can say that the summation of the x component will be equal to 0 and the summation of the y components will be equal to 0 as well and the summation of all the z components will be equal to 0. 
So now we have to add up uh, all the x components, y components and z components for these four forces. So the x component of this tension T is 16 uh, divided by 14. So I will write this as 60 divided by 14. And the I component of this FA is 0 since we have only one, one of its component which is acting in the J direction. So its x component is 0. So I will write plus 0. And the x component of this FB is minus FB. Its magnitude is minus FB. And the weight has only one component is acting in the z direction. So its x component is 0 as well. So this will be equal to 0. So we have the equation like this. And if I bring this FB to the other side, so we will have FB equals to 60 divided by 14. So we have FB in terms of that tension T in this OC cable. Similarly, the summation of forces along y will be equal to 0 as well. So we have to add up all the j components. So this is 4t divided by 14. 4t divided by 14 minus fa. And its j component, the j component of fb is 0 and the j component of that weight is 0 as well. So this is equal to 0. Or from this, we can write that fa equals to 4t divided by 14. So now we have fa in terms of that tension t. Similarly, the summation of forces along the z-axis will be equal to 0 or the summation of components along the z-axis will be equal to 0. So this is 12t divided by 14. So this is 12t divided by 14. And the k component of fa is 0, the k component of fb is 0. And this weight is acting in the negative k. So I have to write this as minus 196.2 and this is equal to 0. Or uh, from this equation, we can write that 12t divided by 14. This is equal to 196.2. And if I cross multiply, so that t is 14 divided by 12. So this will give us the tension t in this OC cable. So the tension t in this OC cable comes out to be 228.9. So t equals to 228.9 newtons. Now we know FB in terms of T, so FB in terms of T is given, we can find that FB. So FB will be equal to 6 into T. So that is 6 multiplied by T, which is 20. This is this was 228.9. Let me confirm it. This is uh, 196.2 multiplied by 14 divided by 12. This is 228, this is 228.9. So now FB is uh, 60 divided by 14. So 6 multiplied by 228.9 divided by 14. This gives us 98.1, uh, 98.1 Newton. Similarly, this is FA is 4T divided by 14. This is 4 multiplied by 228.9 divided by 14. This gives us 65.4 Newton. So this is 65.4 Newton. Now, since we are required to find the, the unstretched length, each spring, uh, we are required to find the, the stretch in each spring, right? So as we know that the spring force is always equal to K times the stretch in length. So if you want to find the stretch in this spring A, so that will be FA equals to KXA and XA, the stretch in this spring A will be equal to FA divided by K. So now FA is given, which is 65 point, that is not given, we have determined this is 65.4 divided by K. So for both the spring, the K is 300 Newton per meter. So this is divided by 300. So 65.4, that answer divided by 300. So this gives us Xa equals to the stretch in spring A is 0 0.218 meter. Similarly, Xb using this same equation, Fb will be equal to Kxb and Xb will be equal to Fb divided by Kb of the spring, this is Ka of the spring, but both have the same stiffness. So Fb is 98.1 uh, divided by Kb, which is 300. 
so this is 300 and this will be equal to xb will be equal to 98.1 point 0.1 divided by 300 this is 0 0.327 this is 0 0.327 meters this is xb so this is the stretch in this oa spring that is 0 0.218 and this stretch in this ob spring is 0 0.327 meters so this was required uh, this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do let me know in the comment section if it helps in your learning. Also subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet.